After filming for about five years and upgrading to a Z-Cam where I'm filming 6K and potentially ProRes RAW in the future, I decided to bite the bullet and burn a lot of my money on an NAS. I get the storage space of an external hard drive, but I get the speeds that are two, three, four, five times faster than an SSD, depending on what you've got. Let's talk about setting up your computer and hard drives so that when you're done with the shoot, you can organize everything in the best way possible and keep your precious footage safe. To start off, if you are looking to get into this and you don't have a huge budget, pick up an external hard drive. This one's from Seagate, it's five terabytes. I'll have all of the links down below in the description for whatever your budget may be. If you do pick up one of these, you're also going to have to pick up an external SSD. Uh, you can use an internal SSD if you have it, but I'd recommend just doing an external because you can sell it down the road. And if you work on the go or you want to trade some work with somebody else who's collaborating with you, these are the way to do it. I use a RAID 5 setup. I'm not going to get into the RAIDs. You can find that elsewhere on YouTube or Google. But what it means is that out of the four hard drives I have in my NAS, one of them can fail completely and I won't lose anything. Since I upgraded to an NAS, I do still keep a couple external hard drives around because one, they are really cheap and they can hold a lot of storage. I have a, a bigger one over here that is a 12 terabyte Western Digital. And what I do is I plug that into the NAS and bi-weekly, my NAS will back up to the external hard drive that I have. If you don't have an NAS or some crazy solution like I do, that's all right. Your external will be set up just like this. Let's head into my SWF drive, which is my NAS. In my assets folder, I have pretty much all of my branding, photo presets, plugins, color and LUTs, and pretty much everything that I will always need. This always just stays up to date. And then in Silverworth, let's go ahead and head in here. You can see that I have two dates. I like to work on a two year basis with all of my projects. Everything that was prior to 2019 is actually on another external drive that is not here. It keeps some space on my NAS, it keeps things cleaner, and I still have them elsewhere. If we head into 2020, again, I have it really simple. I have my productions, which is basically my commercial work if I work with local businesses or brands. I do have schooling here because I'm getting my master's right now and it has to do with video production. So let's go into the weddings here. I don't like to put dates, I know a lot of people do, but the dates can get a little busy. So I just like to number my projects based on the chronological order that I did them. Inside of each wedding, I have audio, I have behind the scenes footage, I've got my exports, footage, grabs. You can see all this, pause it and see what I've got. It's all pretty self-explanatory. I actually like to rename everything before I import it into my editor. That really helps me when I put it in my editor because I know that my assistant was rocking one camera and I was using the other, so if I know I had something, I can quickly find it. Inside my corporate work, I have the different companies that I work with on occasion, and then inside those folders, I have the actual project, um, and I still number it just like I do with weddings. All of this is personal preference, but I found this to be the best way to organize everything and to keep it relatively minimal, even though there's a lot of content in there. But once you've got everything onto your archive drive, then we need to back it up somewhere. If you do have the money, again, make sure you pick up a second external. That's going to be your backup. Now that we've got a system that's clean and organized, we can kind of talk about how we work from it. I'm gonna be focusing on Final Cut here, but I think that if you use another editor, this will all still make sense. I've already made the library, but from scratch, what I would do is I would go to File, New, library, go to the SSD, and I save the library or the save file in general on the SSD. Once that's been done, the first thing we need to do is actually tap the library and go on over to storage locations. Make sure you hit modify settings. A key step here is making sure that your media is actually in the library. The motion content can stay in the motion templates folder, which is on your computer. Uh, the cache also needs to be in your library and your backups, you can choose wherever you'd like that to be. After we've modified those settings, let's actually import the footage. Once I found the wedding that I'm working on, I'm gonna go into the footage. I'm gonna highlight everything. And the most important step here is that your files are going to copy to the library. Don't leave the files in place. 
the reason that we copy to the library is it's simply doing what it says. It's going to copy everything from your archive drive where you're importing the footage and making a duplicate inside the project library. So if you're using Premiere or Resolve, just make sure you manually put all the files over onto your SSD. But in Final Cut, it's gonna do that for you. I don't use finder tags or folders to create keywords. I will hit on this in another video. When it comes to transcoding, make sure that optimized media is not checked. Proxy media is personal preference. I do like to create proxy media and those proxies will live inside of the library and they won't live inside of your archive. So theoretically, you could leave files in place and only create proxy media. And what this means is you can take the SSD and work with just proxy media on a really slow computer and run it fairly well. For this instance, we're gonna copy everything to the library and create proxy media. Let it do its thing. It's gonna take some time because it does have to copy everything. And it's also gonna transcode the media if you chose to do proxy. As your footage is copying over and transcoding, we need to make sure that we go into Final Cut Pro, Preferences, head over to Playback, and make sure that Create Optimized Media for Multicam Clips is unchecked. That's just gonna slow your computer down. It's going to take up a ton of space. We don't need it with how we're setting everything up. Once everything's copied over and you've transcoded the proxies, if you've done that, let's show you what actually happens to the project. To show you what the library looks like once you've done this process, I'm gonna load up a wedding that I've already finished. And here's a save file. If you right click and go to show package contents, and then we see the projects that we've worked on and a few other folders. The most important one here is the original media. That's where all the original files will live. Your transcoded media will also be in here, but I didn't proxy in this project. After you have finished a project, we need to make sure that we clean everything up and that you're not wasting precious space. Let's go back into Final Cut and make sure you click on the library, go up to file and delete generated library files. We're gonna delete all of the render files if you are using renders, that takes up a ton of space. Second, let's delete all the optimized media and the proxy media as well. Even if you haven't checked this, I don't, I don't know why, but I do anyway. You're gonna hit okay. Uh, I'm not gonna do that because I'm not ready to do it yet. But what that does is it actually removes all the proxies, it removes all the renders, it removes all of the nonsense that you no longer need. Let's go back into the SSD. We're gonna right click, show package contents. And where it shows original media, just right click and move that entire folder to the trash. Make sure you empty your trash. And from there, you can transfer the original library back to the NAS. This means that if you make some adjustments down the road and you open the library, all you have to do is relink the footage from the original source and you're good to go. We've cleaned everything up. We don't have it on an SSD anymore. We're ready for the next project. Let's kind of backtrack to everything that I use. I use my NAS, which is where all the footage lives. And then on the NAS, I'm able to set up routines. And so twice a week, everything that's on that hard drive gets backed up to my external hard drive. From there, I will also back up that project onto this external hard drive and I put it at a completely different location. Now, since I do have an NAS and when I'm ready to move to Final Cut, I actually create the library in my NAS. You're probably going to use your SSD, but that means the library is a backup. The NAS has all the footage. The external has all the footage. And then I've got my other external, which has the footage. So I've got four different places that this footage is. That's just a complete security net. I don't have fast internet where I am, so cloud services aren't an option you can set that up for even more safety and redundancy. I'll be creating some specific videos for the NAS itself, and then also the process that I go through when editing a wedding. And it doesn't matter if you have a really fast or a slow computer, it will work every single time. And I guarantee you that this process will speed your editing up tenfold. See you on the next one.